The name's certainly unusual and so for Vauxhall is the approach. In this Adam Rocks Air model, the brand has bought us a car that doesn't take itself too seriously. The perfect antidote, perhaps, to an ordinary everyday super mini. With jacked up body styling and a sliding soft top roof, this car taps into the small crossover market and is at its best in turbocharged one litre three cylinder petrol guys. Once you've got a small, trendy little car, there are all kinds of ways you can develop it. Look, for example, at all the derivations we see of models like the Mini and the Fiat 500. Fashion, it seems, has many forms. And here's one of them. The Adam is the car that, since 2012, has launched Vauxhall into competition with models like the two I've just mentioned. In this Rocks Air, guys, the plan is to broaden its appeal. The Mini and the Fiat 500 have already shown how the basic concept for a stylish urban runabout of this kind can be adapted to create either a convertible or a small SUV-style crossover. In Rock's air form, this Adam ambitiously aims to combine both of these genres in one stylish little package. And since there's never been anything quite like this before, Vauxhall has coined a new name for the niche it now believes this car represents that of the CUV, or Compact Utility Vehicle. We're not too sure that that tag will catch on, but this model might. After all, trendy folk needing a small car but not wanting a boring super mini might conceivably be finding it difficult to choose between a fashion-conscious mini-style roundabout, a lifestyle orientated Nissan Duke-style small crossover, or one of the cheaper little convertibles. And they might like the way that this Vauxhall brings all those attributes together. Those buyers that do will certainly be individualists. People prepared to try something new who don't mind paying a little more for the privilege of doing so. Vauxhall hopes that they'll find this Adam Rocks Air model to be fresh and different. But then it has to be for the kind of money it costs. Time to put this car to the test. We know that super mini based crossovers work because they require very few dynamic compromises. Driving a Nissan Duke isn't a lot different from driving a Nissan Micra, in the same way as driving a Renault Capture isn't much of a change from driving a Renault Clio. In developing this Adam Rocks Air model as a city car sized small crossover, the Vauxhall Opel designers knew that they had to achieve a similarly accommodating end result. Buyers used to an ordinary Adam one of their Corsa Super Minis, or indeed almost any conventional small car, had to be able to jump into this one and feel immediately right at home. Which was always going to be difficult to achieve. On paper, after all, the Adam Rocks concept simply shouldn't work. Standard Adam models are, after all, already quite firmly suspended and need to preserve sharp, darty handling to be slick in the city. So you'd think that the last thing a car from this model line would need would be a raise in ride height and a stiffer setup. These are the sort of things you'd think would be necessary in creating any sort of small crossover. In practice, though, the development team have somehow made this unlikely package work. They've given the car a slightly wider track, bigger wheels, fatter tyres and add in 15 millimetres to the ride height while recalibrating the springs, the dampers and roll bars. All of which, far from damaging the Adams ride and handling compromise, has somehow, against the odds, improved it. The longer suspension travel and grippier rubber make this car a more supple, tenacious companion on bumpy, flowing secondary roads. And it actually hangs on rather well through the corners. It's not enough to make this rocks air in any way sporty. The vague steering discourages any really dynamic intent on the part of the driver. But then this car doesn't need to be sporty. Vauxhall has the Grand Slam hot hatch Adam model to cater to the hot hatch crowd. Likely potential buyers will be more interested in other attributes. The commanding driving position, the big chunky mini-like wheel, the wide low glass area. It all makes you eager to tackle the urban jungle, if not the actual countryside. Follow those instincts, for a trip off-piste in this car would certainly be unwise. 
you probably won't be surprised to hear that there's no four-wheel drive option offered with this model, but then few small crossovers offer that. Many, though, would quite happily take on a light forest trail in clement weather, the kind of terrain you'd feel a bit ridiculous tackling in this Vauxhall. Better then to use its raised ride height to tackle the speed humps, potholes and traffic jams of urban life. The rocks air is certainly well suited to this kind of environment, with a tight turning circle and this useful dash mounted city button that lightens the steering for low speed manoeuvring and can be further aided by an optional automatic parking system. If things should snarl up, then you've the pleasure of opening yourself to the elements by using this roof-mounted button to retract the car's electric folding canvas top, a process that takes just seven seconds. In an ordinary small convertible, you'd have to be creeping along to do this, but here you can operate this roof mechanism when you're cruising on the open road too, at speeds of up to 85 miles an hour. That makes a big difference. If you're roofed down on the motorway in a rival Fiat 500C or mini convertible and the heavens suddenly open, you're going to get wet. The Fiat's roof, you see, only operates at speeds below 37 miles per hour, whilst the Mini's only works below 20 miles per hour, which means in these cars that putting up the top either has to wait until you reach the next junction, wet and frustrated, or you've got to stop in a potentially dangerous position on the hard shoulder and wait for the roof mechanics to do their thing as the raindrops pound down on your head. With this Vauxhall, there's none of that. Press this little button on the overhead console and you can open or close the roof at will. Better still, with the roof closed, refinement is near on as good as it is on the fixed top, Adam. On to engines where the advice is simple. If you can afford to stretch to the one litre Ecotec direct injection turbo three cylinder petrol power plant I'm trying here, then for goodness sake do so. It's just so much better than the other engines Vauxhall offers in this car. Both also petrol units, but firmly old tech. With those, there's a choice of either a 70 PS 1.2i unit that makes 62 miles an hour from rest in a lengthy 14.9 seconds en route to 103 miles per hour, or an 87 PS 1.4i option that improves those figures to 12.5 seconds and 109 miles per hour. So, why is this 115 PS 1 litre direct injection turbo variant so much better? Well, where do I start? It's revier, more efficient, it has much more pulling power through the gears thanks to the provision of nearly 50% more torque. That means it'll pull happily from 30 miles per hour in fifth gear or climb hills without you needing to drop down into lower gears. And of course, despite its smaller capacity, it's quicker too, reducing the 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint time to 9.9 .9 seconds en route to 121 miles per hour. Surprisingly, for a three cylinder engine, it's also pretty refined, at least at higher speeds. Other brands had produced more economical engines with this kind of configuration, but in real world use, I'm not sure that many of them can better this one. We're now used to seeing little Nissan Juke-style crossover class vehicles based on B-segment Super Minis. But this, we're told by Vauxhall, is the very first crossover to be based on a smaller A-segment city car. Is there a market for such a thing? The Griffin brand thinks so and has brought us an Adam that's taller, wider and tougher than its ordinary stablemates in order to prove the point. Mild attempts at the lifestyle orientated SUV-ness demanded from this type of design are delivered by the front and rear silver skid plates provided to draw attention to a ride height that's been raised by 15 millimetres. Sealing the deal, Vauxhall hopes, is the pleasurable advantage of an electric folding canvas roof, a feature that's rare to find in any kind of compact crossover model. On closer acquaintance, the first thing you notice is this protective anthracite coloured plastic cladding that's wrapped tightly around the car to offer up what the brand hopes is a tough, muscular look. The front trapezoidal grille with its chrome central brand bar is embedded in this cladding, whilst contrasting satin chrome boomerang elements frame the front fog lamp housings. Of course, cynics say that fashion-led small runabouts are merely smart-suited city cars wearing super-mini price tags. And the stats here suggest that there's some truth in this. 
at under 3.7 metres in length, this Adam is actually shorter than many city cars and a full 300 millimetres shorter than Vauxhall's Corsa Super Mini. But there's more to it than that. The tall height and the considerable width, this model is actually wider than a Corsa, positions it visually as a bigger car than it actually is. You notice this in profile, where the higher, wider looks of the three-door only body style are matched by a range of bespoke colours unique to the Roxair model. There's also a choice of either standard 17-inch or, as in this case, optional 18-inch alloy wheels that can be further personalised with so-called wild design wheel clips. Under the skin, the car is, like any ordinary Adam variant, based on rather old underpinnings, those of a third-generation Corsa Super Mini dating all the way back to 2006. Still, in this particular guise, it has at least been properly modified. That higher ride height necessitating the need for parts of the chassis to be either redesigned or retuned, including the dampers, the springs, the rear suspension geometry and the steering. <clears throat> You'll want to know about the opening top which, as with cars like Fiat's 500C and Citroen's DS3 Cabrio, is really more of a giant sunroof than any sort of proper convertible arrangement. Where the Vauxhall holds advantages over those two cars, though, is in the way that when the durable, weatherproof, electric folding canvas panel is fully open, there's no rear visibility issue. The sandwich of fabric folding back neatly onto the C-pillars in just seven seconds. This arrangement has the other advantage of not impinging upon access to the boot or the space that lies within it. Move round to a rear section distinguished by chrome trimmed reversing lamps, LED tail lights, an integrated rear roof spoiler and a bold chrome exhaust and if you're headed for the boot you'll notice the lack of practicality compromise immediately. Getting stuff into the back of a soft top Fiat 500, a Mini or a Citroen DS3 is a bit of a faff. Here you've got the full width opening you'd have in any normal Adam model and exactly the same trunk capacity. Which is just as well for the 170 litre total this Vauxhall offers is a little less than what's available from the models I just mentioned and is accessible only over quite a high loading lip. Still, you can make good use of the space you do have if you tick the boxes for extra cost features like a luggage net and a lockable in-boot compartment. There's also the option of a neat flex-fix bike carrier that allows you to carry up to a couple of bicycles, not something you'd expect to be able to do with a car this small. If you've bulky stuff to carry inside, the split-folding rear seats can be pushed forward to free up 663 litres of fresh air. But what if you need those rear seats for passengers? Well, as in a Fiat 500, the high roof gives a spacious feel, something here that is further underlined by the greater width and wide glass area. But all the smoke and mirrors in the world can't create space where there isn't much. And Vauxhall's claim that this design can comfortably seat four adults requires, for fulfilment, the directive that those in the front should be very short-legged indeed. To be fair, it's virtually impossible for something this short to properly seat two fully-sized people in the rear, something most Adam owners will rarely want to do anyway. But for those occasions when friends do need transport, they'll probably feel less claustrophobic here than they would in some slightly larger compact crossover models I can think of. Though a bit of a squeeze for six-footers, it's certainly nicer back here than it would be in a rival Mini Convertible or a Fiat 500C. Up front, the designers have made some effort to give this Rocks Air model a bit of its own distinctive character, with the main instrument cluster, the seat and door panel colours and various other trim elements all unique to this derivative. With the standard model, buyers get two colour themes. One which uses the brandy-coloured fabric and Morikana trimmed seats from the original prototype Adam Rocks concept show car. Or a so-called coffee bean design with dark brown seats complementing a, a black cabin trimmed with bright blue stitching. Here, though, I've got the optional full leather trim. Otherwise, it's the standard Adam recipe. 
if you're not familiar with that, we're talking here of a feeling that's no doubt intentionally quite mini-like. An impression mainly created by provision of the same kind of oversized chunky steering wheel, which actually rather adds to the intended feeling of impending fun. The red needled instrument layout with its round watch style dials is clear and straightforward to get to grips with, though it's a pity that the Speedo lacks specific 30 and 70 mile per hour markings. The front seats are supportive and comfortable, and you also get a reasonable amount of interior storage room with deep long door pockets, a partitioned open compartment at the base of the centre console, a decently sized glove box and the usual cup holders. The clean overall design is complemented by a centre console proving that GM designers really can do this kind of thing in a smart, concise and easy to use form. Instead of the rows of complicated little dials and knobs you get on a Corsa, an Astra or an Insignia, there's a simple, easy to grasp layout that most buyers will want to dominate with the optional 7 inch LCD colour IntelliLink infotainment system I have fitted here. This is one of the first setups of its kind to be able to communicate with both Apple and Android devices and applications and is operable either via the touchscreen itself through Apple's Siri voice control system or through steering wheel switch gear. As you'd expect, it deals with stereo and smartphone duties, plus in the gallery section you can store videos and personal pictures while the phone app section allows you to download clever apps for things like internet radio, podcasts and Bringo satellite navigation. Like more ordinary Adam variants, this version is based around a single three-door body style with a petrol-only engine range, but it's aimed very much towards the wealthier end of the buying spectrum for a car of this kind. The conventional Adam lineup starts with a basic jam specification, then graduates to glam level, culminating in slam trim. Buyers targeting that plushest option are being asked here to find another £600 more for the beefier body kit that marks out the rocks trim, with another £1,000 on top of that getting them the electric folding canvas roof that adds the air designation. So far, so reasonably straightforward. What about overall pricing then? I've already suggested it'll hardly be bargain basement orientated, but then no fashion-led urban trinket of this kind is ever particularly cheap. Models like the Mini and the Fiat 500 set the trend for city car sized runabouts priced against larger super minis, but compensating their buyers with a super sized helping of style and desirability. So it is here. Standard Adam variants are pitched from around £12,000, but of course, as I've said, this Rocks Air package builds upon the top slam trim level, which takes you up to around £15,000. From this point, if you're still interested, there's one of those something old, something new decisions to make. Will your budget restrict you to the two older engines Vauxhall offers at this kind of price point? The 70 PS 1.2i unit or the 87 PS 1.4i power plant? Or will you be able to stretch up to around £17,000 and get your Adam Rocks Air equipped with a far more modern and infinitely preferable 1 litre direct injection turbo 115 PS engine that we've been trying here? Whatever your decision, you're talking about the kind of money that will buy you quite a lot elsewhere. Although, to be fair, there's nothing else that marries together style, suv -ness and convertible motoring quite like this Vauxhall does. The same sort of cash would buy you the more feebly powered convertible versions of the Mini or the Citroen DS3 or a well-specified open-roof Fiat 500C. Or perhaps you might want to compromise and spend the same sort of amount on, say, a plush version of a fixed-top Mini hatch with an optional panoramic glass roof. None of these options, though, will give you the lifestyle orientated SUV style feel that Vauxhall has here tried to introduce with this Rox model's raised ride height and body kit, the kind of look modern buyers like so much, and the sort of thing popularised by small crossovers like Nissan's Duke. Rox Air Money will also buy you the most affordable versions of cars like that, not only the Duke, but also the models like the Kia Soul, the Ford Eco Sport the Fiat 500X, the Peugeot 2008, 
the Suzuki Vitara and the Renault Capture. As a budget choice, you could even throw another Fiat into the mix, the chunky little Panda Trekking. If you've an alternative small crossover in mind that I haven't mentioned in that list, then the chances are it'll be quite a bit pricier than this particular Adam variant. Models like Skoda's Yeti, Jeep's Renegade, Honda's HRV, Mazda's CX-3, the, the Mini Countryman and Vauxhall's own Mocha, mostly sell from around £17,000 to £20,000 and beyond. And that's an awful lot of money for a compact car, even a very fashionable one. In other words, you've got to draw the line somewhere. Somewhere like this? Well, why not? After all, the ROX Air package does include quite a lot of standard. As I've said, the air designation means that you've stumped up the extra for the canvas electrically retracting panel that'll open you up to the elements and can be ordered in two colours, black or what Vauxhall calls sweet coffee. These shades there to combine with a variety of roof colour choices you can make. All variants come complete with that ROX body kit with its raised body height, integrated rear spoiler, chromed exhaust and silver skid plates. And these features are there to complement smart 17-inch alloy wheels, deep black tinted glass for the rear section and tailgate, and LED for the tail lamps and daytime running lights. Inside, you step across bespoke Vauxhall sill plates into an interior characterised by your choice between two distinct trim designs. In standard form, there's either brandy-coloured fabric and Morricana trimmed seats, or you can opt for what Vauxhall call a coffee bean design with dark brown seats complementing a black cabin trimmed with bright blue stitching. Either way, the colour you've chosen will be matched on a tactile multifunction steering wheel you'll find trimmed in leather, with the same material also used as a finishing touch for the gear lever and for the handbrake. As for more conventional stuff, well, for the money, you'd expect things like remote central locking, which here comes with a lovely rocks design flap key, electric front windows, air conditioning, and probably also cruise control and Bluetooth phone connectivity. There's also hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and electric power steering with a useful city mode that, at the touch of a button, increases assistance at lower speeds. Also included as part of the standard package is a decent quality stereo, this one featuring a six plus one speaker arrangement a DAB radio, plus USB and aux in connections. Those wanting to go further have the option of an upgraded 315 watt eight speaker infinity sound system I definitely want to talk to my dealer about. Talking of options, given that this is supposed to be a premium Adam model, it's a bit surprising to have to pay extra things like an alarm, floor mats and on the older power plants, a start stop system for the engine. More justifiable extra cost features include leather trim, heating for the steering wheel and front seats, electric climate control, this car's larger 18-inch alloy wheels, an ambient lighting package and sports pedals. There's also the sight and light pack I have here, which gives you auto headlights and wipers plus an anti-dazzle rear view mirror. Oh, and you can also specify rear parking sensors, though if you need those on a car as small as this one, a visit to the opticians may need to be scheduled onto your personal organiser. A personal organiser that might well end up being integrated into what is this car's most important optional feature, one we really don't think it should be without, the IntelliLink infotainment system. With USB and Bluetooth connectivity, it offers a gallery section that can play your stored videos and show your personal pictures, while the phone apps section can link you in with approved apps like Stitcher, and tune in for global podcasts and internet radio stations. Plus, you may well want to add Bringo, a navigation app, likely in future to make many extra cost sat nav systems redundant. Otherwise, when it comes to the finished spec of this car, beyond the things I've mentioned, it's really just down to the final look and feel you want this Adam to have. When the original version of this Vauxhall was launched, it offered a previously unheard of degree of potential personalization when it came to things like choice of exterior body color, decal packs, wheel trims, and various interior and exterior decor panels. Many of these features can be clipped on and off to suit your changing tastes or those of subsequent owners. 
So you can go a bit extreme if you like, safe in the knowledge that it won't necessarily leave your car as being completely unsaleable at trade-in time. The one thing that isn't optional on this Adam, and shouldn't be, is safety. This is one of the first cars in this class to get two seatbelt pretensioners on each front seat. Many rivals only have one pretensioner per front seat. This helps to control body movement in a frontal crash. As you'd expect, all models get the usual twin front, side and curtain airbags and ABS brakes, as well as tyre pressure monitoring and Vauxhall's latest generation ESP Plus stability control setup. True, some of the fancier safety systems borrowed from larger cars that other rivals have started offering are missing from the options list. But you can pay extra for an optional pack that combines two key features. First, an automatic park assist system that'll help you identify an urban parking space and then steer you into it. And a side blind spot alert setup that'll stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another car. No small car can get by these days without a strong set of running cost returns. And this one's no different, though the decision to go without the option of diesel power from launch was a curious one given that all this model's obvious rivals all offer it. There's no real efficiency penalty for choosing this ROX Air package over that of any standard Adam variant and, as with one of those, key to the overall proposition is the engine we'd urge you to try and stretch to in this car, the three-cylinder 1-litre Ecotec direct injection turbo petrol unit that we're trying here. It's a power plant that's transforming Vauxhall's various compact models and is extremely lightweight, tipping the scales at just 106 kilos. It's a unit that already complies with future versions of the current Euro 6 emission standard and one that, as you'd expect from a modern design, includes a start-stop system as standard to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. As a result, though this is the most potent unit you can have in this car, you get the extra performance it offers with nearly all the cleanliness and frugality you'd find in the lower-powered versions. To be specific, in an Adam Rox Air 1 litre Ecotec variant, you're supposed to be able to manage a CO2 emissions figure of 119 grams per kilometre, along with a combined cycle fuel return of 55.4 miles per gallon. Other rivals can improve on this level of efficiency, but not by much, and not with the same level of drivability that Vauxhall offers here. If drivability is not a priority for you though, then you might be quite happy choosing between the two older four-cylinder petrol engines that the brand also offers with this car. The 70 PS 1.2i unit or the 87 PS 1.4i power plant. Both derivatives manage 53.3 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and around 125 grams per kilometre of CO2, but you can improve that showing by opting for an extra cost EcoFlex pack that adds a stop-start system, low rolling resistance tyres and other tweaks to improve efficiency. With this included, the returns improve to 57.6 miles per gallon and 115 grams per kilometre. These are stats that you can hopefully replicate on a day-to-day -day basis thanks to an EcoDrive Assistant, basically a section of the trip computer that monitors energy consumption and indicates when to shift up. What else? Are residual values? Well, these are beginning to firm up as the market adjusts to the idea of a, a desirable fashion-led small Vauxhall. That only leaves insurance groupings, rated at 2E for the 1.2i version, 5E for the 1.4i and 10E for this 1-litre direct injection turbo model. Perhaps at times we're all guilty of overanalyzing our purchases, of taking things a little too seriously. Here, in contrast, is a car that's a perfect antidote to this tendency. Nobody actually needs a fashionable small runabout with crossovery SUV style looks and an open top roof, but hey, you'd like one, wouldn't you? It's the kind of idea that makes absolutely no sense on paper, but proves to be a remarkably appealing thing once we come across it in the metal. Some would say that the pricing of this car is as difficult to understand as the concept behind it. 
But the reality is that for years, Mini and Fiat 500 customers have been loading up their vehicles with extras and paying the kind of money Vauxhall is asking here. What's crucial to the fashionable folk who will buy trendy small models is not the asking figure bottom line, but the statement the car in question makes about them. Or to put it another way, the real issue here is whether this Adam rocks. We think enough customers will agree that it does to justify Vauxhall's faith in creating this car, and its chunkier, more masculine character will certainly help. While standard Adam model sales are, in percentage terms, split 75-25 in favour of women, the brand's marketeers reckon that this derivative will be equally appealing to both sexes. Whatever your perspective on that, the reality is that in choosing a rocks air, you'll need to put rationality on one side for a minute. It isn't the most practical, the most efficient, or in any way the most sensible choice you could make on a premium small car budget. But then life's serious enough as it is. If we all bought on rational grounds, we'd probably all be driving Volkswagen Golfs. Here is a car that celebrates a little irrationality. More power to it. <laughs>